We're talking a little bit about the Middle East, and um, I know this seems like it doesn't relate a lot to your life today, but it does, because I believe the Western way of life is at stake, and this is the final play. Uh, things will start to shake apart. You will start to see Europe um, start to shake apart. The economies of the world, the currencies of the world will start to shake apart, and um, uh, we will be more and more active in places like Libya, and then... The world will gather to chase the Jews into the sea, and that will spend the, uh, uh, spell the end of the West unless we stand together. You hear a lot about the players in the Middle East, like Hamas and Hezbollah, but the truth is most people don't have a clue. We don't know anything about them. I was the same until recently. I want to show you who they are and what I have found about them. A lot of it is pretty easy. Hezbollah was created back in 1982. It was a group of Islamic Revolutionary Guards from Iran. The goal was to spread the Islamic Revolution across the Arab world. Where did that revolution come from? Well, the revolution that was inspired by the Ayatollah Khomeini in Iran. These are the people that are pushing for the new Arab Spring now. Their time has come. At least that's what they believe. Iran's own revolution was started by this guy, and he believed, and so does Hezbollah, that they can make it happen elsewhere. This time, it's for the entire world. Hezbollah is obviously directly tied to Iran and often acts in its behest. Before 9-11, Hezbollah was known um, as the organization that was responsible for more American deaths than any other terrorist organization. Why? They first appeared on everybody's radar in 1983, the Marine Barracks bombing, which took the lives of 241 of our troops. Now, I told you earlier about the roots, uh, the roots of the Mufti. Remember, that was the original Mufti. He was a key figure for Muslims in Palestine, especially since he was anti-British and anti-Jewish. Have it? Then we have Hamas. Now. Most people don't really understand that Code Pink is standing with Hamas. All these people are standing with Hamas. Hamas grew out of the Muslim Brotherhood. Yes, the same Muslim Brotherhood that our Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, claimed was largely secular, and they, they hated violence. The founder and the spiritual leader of Hamas was coordinating with the Muslim Brotherhood's political activities in Gaza in the 1970s. He then went on to found Hamas on the local political arm of the Muslim Brotherhood in 1987. A year later, the Hamas Charter was written and published. It specifically rejected the Muslim Brotherhood's policy of non-violence. It is also riddled with anti-Semitism. Please um, make sure this is up at glenbeck.com and, and read the Hamas Covenant, as they call it. Right in the charter, and I'm going to read directly from it and quote, quote, the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight the Jews, killing the Jews. When the Jew will hide behind stone and trees, and the stones and trees will say, oh Muslims, oh Abdullah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Why is anyone talking about the plight of the Palestinians when we're talking about being in bed with people that say things like this? This is either going to help clear things up and make things make more sense or less sense. You won't understand the actions of our country and our leaders and the whole Western world, quite honestly. But things after you hear this make a little more sense on what you're hearing from the Middle East. This quote is from the spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. He spoke a few months ago in Cairo following the return after Egypt's democratic revolution. First time he could speak there, hundreds of thousands of people showed up. But back in 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 2009, remember, he said this. على كرسي متحرك فأطلق رصاصة على أعداء الله اليهود. That sounds an awful lot like the Hamas Charter, doesn't it? We have gotten an awful lot of criticism um, on this program whenever 
we talk about the Nazis. Well, you know what? Get over it. The fact is, however, you don't have to go back to Hitler to find violence and vicious hatred and the desire to exterminate an entire race of people. You only have to turn on your news. Check the headlines. You'll see it right before your eyes. But most in the mainstream media will not tie this stuff together. These are people who surround a tiny little country, Israel. These are people who have been trying to wipe out the Western way of life. The same people who flew planes into the World Trade Center. The same people the radicals on the left in America are teaming up with to destroy the Western way of life through Israel. This is why we have to wake up. We have to stand up and be counted. Stand up and restore courage. Stand for Israel now. They are terribly terribly alone. Does America still stand with Israel? It's our only true Middle East ally. Do we still stand?